Hi, my name is Max. Welcome to Pi Cockpit. Thank you for letting me introduce it to you. I'd like to tell you why I started this project first. Sometimes computers can feel very complex, like the cockpit of an airplane. Sure, all the information is online, but learning it can take a lot of time, and every one of us has other things in life they could be doing instead, right? After all, if you want to travel to New York, you are happy to just take the plane and don't want to get a pilot license for your trip. Pi Cockpit is here to make your life with the Pi easier. My vision is to introduce web-based tools which allow you to control and use the Pi without having to mess with a command line or understand Linux. I want to empower everyone to be able to unlock the power of a Raspberry Pi with a simple and friendly web interface. That is why I also have a free tier in place, so as many people can benefit as possible. Currently, the first five Pis are free of charge. This is the vision. It's a work in progress, with much more to come. I'll show you what's waiting inside currently, and will definitely release new videos once new features are available. You'll be able to monitor your Pis live. You will get useful information about the Pis, making them easier to use. For instance, the public and private IP address. I'm going to show you how to add your Pi to Pi Cockpit now. We start out on PiCockpit.com. There's a link to register in the top right corner. Click on it and here you'll find a short and sweet form to get sign up for PiCockpit.com. The registration is free of charge and your first five pies are totally free to add. I'm still working out some pricing details, but I intend to always continue to have a free tier in place, so don't worry about that. Type in your name, your email address, and your password. Yes, that is a maximum of 1000 characters for the password. I take security very, very seriously on PyCockpit.com and require passwords to be secure. Don't worry, 10 characters are ok for the password, but be sure to mix case sensitivity and drop in a number and special character, like for instance the question mark, for good measure. I personally use a password manager called KeePass uh, on Windows to generate and store my passwords. I copy the password by double-clicking it here in KeePass. Please agree to the terms of usage of Pi Cockpit, and I also recommend you to subscribe to the newsletter as well, as I'm going to keep you informed of new features which get released. As you can see, the account was added and we were logged in automatically. Please ignore the message about Pi Doctor at this stage. If you see one, there's a new way to add a Pi, which I'm going to show you right away. We need to set up an API key once to provide this to the Pi as a key to your new Pi Cockpit account. In order to get the API key, click on your username in the top right corner. Click Profile and Settings. Click on API keys here and then click on the Add API Key button. Here you are going to be asked for your password to make adding API keys as secure as possible. I copy the password once again from KeePass and click on Create API Key. Now here you see the new API key. I'm going to copy and paste it and add it to KeePass as well. The important bit to remember about the API key is that it is displayed only once. We are storing it in the system in a hashed way, so we also have no way of reconstructing the API key once we have displayed it uh, this time to you. This is in order to keep you safe. Here you see the API key and you can manage it. You can give it a different name. Let's name it and if you ever want to get rid of it, if you lose it or for whatever reason else, you can delete it here. Currently, you can add as many API keys as you want. I might possibly introduce security and rights management for the future with this. 
but you can use one API key for several pies, so this step is only necessary once. Now it's time to boot up your Pi. We will need to use the command line just for the initial installation of a Pi cockpit client. I'm working on making that easier in the future, but right now this step is necessary. Make sure you have an internet connection on your Pi. Click on the terminal icon and a terminal will appear. The terminal icon is this icon right up here in the taskbar of Raspbian. The Pi Cockpit client is the piece of software which connects your Pi with PiCockpit.com. I've come up with an easy one-liner which allows you to install the Pi Cockpit client. I will also post step-by-step -step instructions which actually say what this one-liner does if you are more security conscious, uh, which uh, I totally agree with. But uh, here's the easy way. You've got to enter, exactly as I'm, ent I'm entering it, the following line. Bash space minus C space quotation mark dollar left parenthesis C U R L space minus K space minus S space HTTPS colon double forward slash pi cockpit dot com slash z up dot sh right parenthesis quotation mark now once you've entered the command exactly as i've displayed it here simply press enter and the command will start to execute as i said i will post further instructions on what it actually does uh, basically it adds our repository and then it installs the pi cockpit client if it asks you do you want to continue you can simply press enter here and it will i'm using a pi 4 to demonstrate this but the pi cockpit client is compatible with every pi which runs raspbian currently i support raspbian buster and the previous one raspbian stretch now the pi cockpit client has been started and it's asking us for the api key this was the key which we got before from PyCockpit.com, which we created. So now you've got to enter it. Please be aware that the API key is case sensitive and you've got to put in the dot as well the precise place where it is. So I'm going to enter the API key which I have now. And once you've entered the API key, press enter and it will connect. Don't worry, if you mistype the API key, PyCockpit will ask you to enter it once more. Now you can see that the PyCockpit client has finished connecting. You can see it in this message, finished with connect. Your Pi is now connected to PyCockpit.com if everything was okay. PyCockpit client is now started in the background on your Pi and will run whenever you restart your Pi. It will be automatically started. Now we're finished on the command line. This is everything which we needed to do here. So you can close it and open the web browser to see how the Pi is now connected to PyCockpit.com. Okay, now we're back in the web browser and you can see here, this is the main page, the overview of PyCockpit. Now we click on My Raspberry Pis, the new Raspberry Pi, which was just added. It is live, it is online. And our first step is going to be to give it its own name so let's just call it and by the way you can also add utf8 symbols to the name of the pi so here you go and the pi is now called the big riddle for instance uh, as you see we added a little billiard ball here as you can see, the Pi displays some data about itself in the overview. You can see its current private IPs, uh, including the Wi-Fi and the Ethernet IP, and the public IP, which is pretty handy to see, first of all, which Pis are in which network, because you can have Pis in many different networks. It doesn't really matter where the Pis are, as long as they have internet access, they will report back their live data to PyCockpit.com, where you can access it using a web browser on your smartphone, on your desktop, on the Pi itself even. doesn't really matter where you open PyCockpit.com, you'll have access to the data. And if you click on this little heart icon here, or health state icon, you'll actually see some live uh, usage data and uh, some st statistics, which is very interesting. For instance, the SOC temperature here, 
You can see how it will perform under load. If I put more stress on the Pi, this should go up and so on. And then uh, you see the current RAM usage and how much RAM the Pi has in total. This is a Pi 4, 4 GB, so we actually have 3.8 uh, GB in total. This number excludes the amount which is reserved for the video core. The CPU load is displayed and the hard disk usage. These statistics are updated once every second, live from your Pi. If your Pi will go offline, you will see it here in the online state, then this will turn into a red offline. Clicking on uh, the Pi's name or the image will take you to an overview which will give you lots more information, like for instance the, the MAC address, some more information about the system. You can uh, not all of this information is present in the default run of Pi Doctor, which is run, which is displayed here because it's run in privacy conscious mode. The more interesting bit is here the sensors. As you see, these, this is much more data than on the previous one. You get, for instance, link quality and signal level for your Wi-Fi signal. As you see here, my Wi-Fi signal is very, very good. I have a link quality of 70 of 70. All of this is updated once every second. You get the uptime, you actually get how much of a root partition is used in bytes, and the network total received data, sent data, this keeps ticking up, as you see, because obviously we're sending data to refresh to pycockpit.com. Again, you see the load of all cores, how much has been written and read from the disk and to the disk in total. So this uh, is like a selection of very useful information. Uh, good to know about your Raspberry Pi's health state. And the next step for Pi Cockpit will be to be able to add sensor ports, which will allow you to read environment sensors, for instance, temperature and uh, humidity and all these interesting things. Uh, Pimaroni has a couple of great sensors. Raspi IO has some analog input sensors, and I'm going to be working on this to add them to PyCockpit.com. Another feature I'm planning on adding is to have a uh, way to control the Pi actually from Pi Cockpit so that you will have another tab here, control, where you can restart the Pi and run miscellaneous comments, which you will be able to define yourself. But this will be probably out early 2020 only. Right now it's the sensors which are going to finalize. I'm also very interested in any features you would like to see added on PyCockpit.com. Constructive feedback is always welcome. Right now there's a hard limitation for everyone of five pies. I'm going to work uh, adding the ability to add more pies soon, but there I will have to charge since server costs money, my development time also costs money and I've got to live from something. Basically my goal is to make the Pi an easier machine to use for as many people as possible and so I'm making it free for up to five buys and I'm intending to keep a free tier always. Now I'm going to demonstrate to you what happens when the Pi goes offline. What I'm basically going to do is I'm going to shut it down. Pay attention to the online status here. As you can see, the Pi has now a state of offline. You will see that there's no live information coming through anymore. The information here is kept back from the state it was in previously. When the Pi starts again, all this information is going to be refreshed. Thank you very much for the time looking at PiCockpit.com and have a great day. Subscribe to our channel, share us, give us a like and to be kept in the loop about new features when they get released activate the notifications. Thank you again and have a lovely day. Bye.